Hey everybody, welcome back to the bench. Got another fun-filled year of electronic videos for you. And maybe some other side video projects. Just have to see. Well, I'm back on this amplifier project. I'll put a link in the description, but I did build this little amp a while back. It's uh, simply an NE532. 5532 that is uh, op amp just one channel of it driving an output circuit so it's just an audio amplifier and notice the quality construction here I have a rubber band holding the heat sink together and pinning the bias transistor to the heat sink now you know it's just for the video and it works so We'll run with that. Well, one problem I had with this amplifier was it wasn't clipping symmetrically. So I got it powered up, connected to the music player, playing the one kilohertz signal. And as I turn it up, it starts to clip on the bottom. There, it started on the top. But, yeah, we're clipping on the bottom. Because of that, we're leaving some clean power wattage on the table. Because, you know, to get a clean wattage rating, I have to back this all the way out of clipping, and we lose quite a bit of amplitude. So I want to see if I can correct that, make this to more of a practical amplifier circuit. So right now, here's the schematic. I don't have the original schematic, but this is essentially the same thing. Instead of using a separate Darlington configuration, I'm using these Darlington transistors where both transistors are inside. But it might be a little better to do it this way. I don't have a lot of room on the breadboard, so I'm, I'm just doing it this way with the actual Darlington transistors. And the part number I used should be on the old video, if you want to look that up. What I did before is connect the output to this side of the uh, power amp stage, or the output stage. So there's this circuit here is the bias spreader which you know you adjust to set the bias on the output there is a little bit of level shifting because of the voltage across the bias spreader so what I did here I'm going to connect it to the top side and we'll see what happens and I'll just point the scope or the camera at the scope and I'll move this while the thing is powered up. Got to find an open connection. Yeah, that's not a good place. Right here, maybe. Okay. So I move this wire from the bottom side. This yellow wire is the output from the op amp. So I moved it from here. Where's my pencil at? I moved it from here to the top side of the bias transistor, which is on the heat sink. And look at that. Symmetrical clipping now. So if I turn that down, now it's, you know, clean sine wave, no clipping. I'll leave it there and move it back to where it was. See, it's clipping on the bottom there. But if I move it back, no more clipping. So, now I should be able to get more output power from this thing before clipping. Okay, I now have put a 4 ohm load on. Scoping right at the load. 
and I moved over to this power supply. And for the meantime, I'm on a bulb limiter, which is connected in series with the mains going to the supply. So when I turn it on, you'll see a little flicker. And taking a look at the distortion, it's really just noise. The distortion is very low. Yeah, you know, at least as far as this thing can read or measure. And turn that off. You can also adjust the bias, kind of using this bulb. So if I adjust the bias, see it, and get the bias too high, it goes up. The current goes up and makes the bulb brighter. It goes completely out if I turn it down too much. But I just want a little bit of glow there. This is not really a technical way of setting the bias. I'd really want to have the bias about 40 milliamps or so on this amplifier. And I would do that by measuring the voltage drop across the emitter resistors and doing the calculations to figure the current. You know, it's just uh, volts over resistance equals current. So that's how you determine your bias setting. Okay, now I'm going to get a power output measurement. And I'm going to take this out of the circuit because it will affect my measurement. You see, as I turn the input signal on, it gets brighter drops the voltage so we don't get a good measurement. Okay, there's the output. It's clipping because I have the bulb limiter in the circuit, but when I take that out of the circuit, I have it preset up to its maximum before clipping, and we're getting about 8 volts. 8 volts RMS. Now let's see how much better that is. Well, I already know what it is. It's 16 watts because of the math. It's 8 squared, 8 volts RMS squared, divided by 4 ohm load, and 16 watts. Now before, I was getting only 11 watts from the supply. Because of the asymmetric clipping, you know, it was clipping on that rail and I couldn't turn the output as high to get a clean sine wave. So fixing that problem has made this amp work much better. And we got 5 watts extra output just fixing that asymmetric clipping issue. And the supply is running around 30.5 volts or so while checking that measurement. So this amplifier is doing quite well. I would say that it's a viable circuit and working great now. Okay, well, just give it a little music listening test and that'll be it. Okay, I'm back on the music player. Give it a quick listening test. Oh, got to turn the power on first. Sounds excellent to my ears. Don't know how the camera's going to interpret that, but very nice little smooth amplifier. Just a, a one movement of the wire connection, and I can get the full output that I expect to get on my power supply. So it's a good little amp. I'd say you can probably get about 25 watts of output if you use a... Uh, 18 volt, you know, plus and minus 18 volt power supply. 
I'm using the any 5532 as I said before and these chips allow you up to a plus and minus 22 volt supply rail so that gives you some headroom to use a bit stronger power supply and get better power if you want to build this thing for yourself of course you want to make sure you uh, lay out the boards and separate the signal and power grounds use a larger heat sink like I said this is just jury rigged for the demo here but that heat sink is too small for an actual amplifier and here is the schematic if you want to pause the video well that's another wrap and I do apologize for not having a lot of videos up lately but that's about the change I'm, I got a lot of subjects to cover I'm gonna have a lot more videos so I hope you stick around and stay tuned thanks for watching